As if Nia DaCosta claiming racism over the uh, bombing of the Marvels isn't enough. You have simps for the movie who are influential coming out to uh, harass individuals with different or differing opinions. Welcome back, everybody. It's your pal Orange Hat here to bring you another video. So, Heather Antos, Gail Simone, and Kelly Sue M DeConnick encouraged their fans to see the Marvels and to demean individuals with opposing opinions. So, yeah, let's get into this. The women in comics are out in force defending the honor of the Marvels movie. It wasted effort, in my opinion which failed spectacularly at the box office for its opening weekend. Heather Antos, Gail Simone, and Kelly Sue DeConnick and others are actively trying to gatekeep fans' opinions, imploring them to see the movie and to be quiet about their criticisms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in what appears to be a coordinated narrative on behalf of women in the comic industry. So, essentially, watch the movie, shut up if you don't like it, and don't speak. That's that's their that's their plan, folks. So for the past few days, excuses have been made for why the Marvels underperformed. Like most recent MCU offerings, Disney Shills pushed back on the fans, calling them sexist, misogynist, and racist, and more. Yeah. One writer for screenwriter implied it was the same problem with men rather than the movie itself. She tweeted, It's really interesting to me. That it's all men who are or who very are actively hating on the Marvels. I know women YouTubers, folks, who don't like the movie. I know women YouTubers who don't like the movie. So yeah, the movie isn't perfect. Read my review for my thoughts, but it doesn't deserve the hate many men are giving it. Boy, you are a sexist piece of shit, aren't you? This said. The stage for the narrative formed by the leaders of recent feminist movements in the comic industry. The Marvels became the cause for them to champion, not just a regular film, on the screen. Gail Simone took to X the evening of the Marvels release to shame fans criticizing how bad the Marvels production was, saying, Good Lord, let people like things. Nobody's saying you can't. They're just saying that they didn't. That's all. They're giving their opinions. It was unclear who this sub subtweet referred to, but timing made it sound like it involved the Marvels. Only problem, however, is not many people are posting what they liked about or liked the Marvels. At least, not many people outside those with mainstream comic jobs. Hypocritically, Simone would mock people expressing their loss of interest in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She responded to one person expressing the such an opinion writing important news. Honestly, I've lost interest in the MCU for ages. Maybe it's a good and fun film, but I won't be watching it. A, a woman said this. And then Gail Simone goes after a woman saying it. Important news. Called an opinion. It's what adults express regularly on this platform. If you want to Respond stupidly, then that's your choice, of course, and reflects on your character. I'm just lucky you didn't accuse me of some kind of misogyny for not wanting to watch yet another MCU film. Maybe this is a good and fun tweet, but I won't be reading it, she says. Oh, well, apparently you did read it because you were dumb enough to respond to it, you dumb idiot. The embattled Heather Antos. Group editor and of licensing at IDW Publishing posted the Marvels is the most fun I have had at a superhero film for a long or for a very long time. Do not miss out. Well, the post tried to instill some sort of fear in her fans that if they didn't see it, they would somehow be unable to see the movie when it inevitably hits Disney Plus in a couple of months. The Marvels is not a limited commodity so it doesn't make sense unless she's pointing out that this film is bound to be out of the theaters in short order the implication is the movie is failing and people like Antos are being called upon in a desperate attempt to promote it 
So yeah, don't miss out. Um, I could watch it for free when it hits n or streaming, but I also plan on not watching it then ev either, because well, I was said that I was a misogynist and uh, I was an asshole and racist and whatnot, simply because I didn't even have interest in it. So, Antos would also retreat Jesse Earl, implying individuals who did not like Marvel Studios turning it into the MCU as racist and misogynists. Earl wrote, Half the reason these franchises still exist is because women kept them alive when they were dormant and go to see them alongside men, it's men focused, or when it's men focused. But heaven fucking forbid, I'm reading this word for word, you watch a single movie with a woman in the lead role, let alone with two non-white leads. Well, I have no problem with uh, women of color leads or with uh, women. I mean, why do I like Alien? Why do I like uh, Alita Battle Angel? Why do I like um, A League of Their Own? The Terminator? Oh, God. There are so many roles that women were in that were so good. Underworld, before it went off cliff. The trilogy was good. And, uh, yeah, Star Wars, very interesting, yeah. All had very strong women leads. And guess what? People didn't hate them. Maybe a few people here and there, sure. But people didn't hate them. Or most people didn't. In fact, a lot of people loved them. But they don't seem to want to remember those because, oh, those are just being used as a weapon against us. Well, no, those are being used as a way of disproving your stupidity and your lies. Moving on. Um, yeah, that re retweet was in response to a guy saying, turning Marvel and Star Wars into girls brands will prove to be one of the costliest decisions in entertainment history. Well, yeah, because I remember when it was made for both men and women. Not just men. You see, women also liked the MCU. Women also liked the uh, Terminator franchise. The Star Wars franchise. Women also liked the Underworld franchise. And the, um... What was that other one? The Alien franchise. Women liked these movies! But yet people didn't think that it was worth noting... But now that you're making them solely female-focused and saying it's not made for men, and then you you freaking bitch when men are um, not going to watch it. Oh, it's the men's fault. You see what you did there? It's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's what retards do. But anyway, continuing on. Finally, Kelly Sue DeConnick made her plea for the Marvels. DeConnick is a woman who took the beloved Carol Danvers Miss Marvel character and turned her into Captain Marvel in the comic books, which soon became a mockery because of the androgynous way she was depicted, which many critics called her Carol Manvers to mock it. She stated, P.S. Go, go see the Marvels and do it this weekend if you can. She wanted her audience to boost the opening num weekend numbers, but not many saw the film, and it posted the lowest opening weekend in MCU history. These women in comics are trying as hard as they can to shill for the MCU to turn into a feminist propaganda series, but their impact is as poor as the sales of the books they work on when they first transformed comics into what or these movies are becoming. What do you think of the feminist comic pros begging people to see the Marvels and not criticize it let us know well honestly i don't give them much uh much respect or much thought they're a bunch of fools a lot of people think that these people are influential sure they're influential to a point but honestly people are starting to see through their stupidity people are starting to see through the fact that these people are sicking their fans on other people who have a different opinion that is the uh, general process and formula that these people want, folks. If you don't like what they like, then you are somehow in the wrong and you should be 
excoriated to such a degree that you feel shame. I feel no shame for my opinions. I am allowed to have my opinions. It's called the First Amendment of our great United States, the Constitution. You see, I'm allowed to say what I want to say, and you have no right to suppress what I say. If you do not agree with it, that is fine. We can agree to disagree. However, if you are going to start coming at me with all these accusations of misogyny, racism, and uh, sexism, well, without even really paying attention to what I am saying, only for simply saying that the movie wasn't that good, okay, then you're a racist and sexist. Why? Why am I a racist and sexist simply because I didn't like a movie? You're jumping to the conclusions that it has anything to do with the uh, skin color or gender of the leads. It has nothing to do with any of that, really. It has everything to do with the quality of the film. That's what I look at. That's when I do my objective uh, reviews, folks. But anyway, that's going to be the video. You all know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, share. All that jazz. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think of this stuff? Do you think that uh, these women are right in sicking their fans on people like rabid dogs? Or do you think that they need to have their uh, animal rights uh, taken away from them so that they... Or do you think that people should be unleashed and not listen to fools like them, rather? I don't think that their voices should be taken away from them. That's suppression of speech. What well, That's what they're doing. So I'm not going to go down that road. However, I do feel that people should probably stop listening to them because, well, they do sound like fools. And if you listen to a fool, you have the uh, you risk the danger of becoming a fool. Anyway, this has been Orange Hat Reviews, folks. You all have a wonderful day. Stay humble.